Treatise on Law is St. Thomas Aquinas' major work of legal philosophy. It forms questions 90–108 of the Prima Secundae first part of the second part of the Summa Theologia, Aquinas' masterwork of scholastic philosophical theology. Along with Aristotelianism, it forms the basis for the legal theory of Catholic canon law. Topic. Aquinas' notion of law Topic. Aquinas defines a law as an ordinance of reason for the common good, made by him who has care of the community, and promulgated. Law is an ordinance of reason because it must be reasonable or based in reason and not merely in the will of the legislator. It is for the common good because the end or telos of law is the good of the community it binds, and not merely the good of the lawmaker or a special interest group. It is made by the proper authority who has care of the community, and not arbitrarily imposed by outsiders. It is promulgated so that the law can be known. He says, thus from the four preceding articles of question 90, the definition of law may be gathered, and it is nothing else than an ordinance of reason for the common good, made by him who has care of the community, and promulgated. Strictly speaking, this is a definition of human law. The term, law, as used by Aquinas is equivocal, meaning that the primary meaning of law is, human law, but other, analogous concepts are expressed with the same term. Topic. Kinds of law Topic. Topic. Natural law Topic. Natural law or the law of nature refers to normative properties that are inherent by virtue of human nature and universally cognizable through human reason. Historically, natural law refers to the use of reason to analyze both social and personal human nature to deduce binding rules of moral behavior. The law of nature, being determined by nature, is universal. In the treatise on law, deals with Aquinas' views on the objective ethical aspect of human decision-making. Aquinas presents a question and then puts each question into article raising specific questions he has. The first three questions are broken down in four topics what is the essence of law, the effects of law, and the eternal law. The first question 90 of Aquinas' treatise on law is what is the essence of law? In the first question he breakdowns the question into four articles. The first article is does law belong to reason? Aquinas believes that reason is the first thing human acts upon and the source in any kind of thing is the measure and rule of that kind of thing. Dot and so we conclude that law belongs to reason. 90.1 The second is law always ordained for the common good? We cannot find common good without reason, it guides us to common happiness through law. Happiness for the whole community. The third article is any person's reason competent to make law? And the last article is promulgation an essential component of law? Promulgation is important so that the law can achieve force. By the end of the fourth article Aquinas comes up with his definition on law. Law is an ordination of reason for the common good by one who has care for the community, and promulgated, 90.4. Next we next is question as 91 on what are the different kinds of law? Aquinas establishes four types of laws eternal law, natural law, human law, and divine law. Eternal law God's providence rules the world. Dot his reason evidently governs the entire community in the universe. 91.1 Aquinas believes that eternal law is all God's doing. Natural law is the participation in the eternal law by rational creators. Natural law allows us to decide between good and evil. Next we have human law, particular applications of law resulting by reason. Human law originally sprang from nature. 91.3 the last law is divine this law is important because it belongs to any law to be directed to the common good at its end. 91.4 Theses laws all go together and the relationship must be presented to comprehend them individually. Question 92 is the effects on laws. The first article is the effect of law to make human beings good? Aquinas feels in order for law to make people good that law needs to guide people to their right virtue. Therefore, since virtue makes those possessing it good, the proper effect of law is consequently to make its subject good, either absolutely or in some respect. 92.1 The second article of 92 is Do we suitably designate legal acts? This article focuses on what designate legal acts consist of commanding, forbidding, permitting, and punishing. 92.2 Aquinas believes that some human acts are good and some are evil. 
Question 93 focuses on the eternal as a whole. Aquinas is asking is the eternal law the supreme plan in God? Aquinas argues whether or not if the eternal law is a plan of God. He says, God made each thing with its own nature. Therefore, the eternal law is not the same as divine plan. 93.1 Augustine contradicts this idea by stating, the eternal law is the supreme plan that we should always obey. 93.1 Aquinas believes that the eternal law is simply the plan of divine wisdom that directs all the actions and movements of created things. 93.1 He's saying that God is above all else. That he creates everything in the universe. Human beings participate in eternal law in two ways by action and cognition. The virtuous are completely subjects to the eternal law, as they always act in accord with. 93.6 Aquinas believes people who are truthful act according to the eternal law. Topic. Human law Topic. For Aquinas, human law is only valid if it conforms to natural law. If a law is unjust, then it is not actually a law, but a perversion of law. Topic. Layout Topic. The treatise on law as part of the Summa Theologica is divided into articles or broad topics and questions or specific topics. The questions each argue for a single thesis and defend it against objections. The division is as follows. 1. In general, Q. 90, of the essence of law the rationality, end, cause, and promulgation of law Q. 91, of the various kinds of law eternal, natural, human, divine, sin laws Q. 92, of the effects of law 2. In particular Q. 93, of the eternal law Q. 94, of the natural law Q. 95, of human law Q. 96, of the power of human law Q. 97, of change in laws Q. 98, of the old law Q. 99, of the precepts of the old law Q. 100, of the moral precepts of the old law Q. 101, of the ceremonial precepts in themselves Q. 102, of the causes of the ceremonial precepts Q. 103, of the duration of the ceremonial precepts Q. 104, of the judicial precepts Q. 105, of the reason for the judicial precepts Q. 106, of the law of the gospel, called the new law, considered in itself Q. 107, of the new law as compared with the old Q. 108, of those things that are contained in the new law Topic. Criticism Topic. William S. Brubacher III has called it perhaps the most famous of metaphysical legal texts, while Robert M. Hutchins declared it that greatest of all books on the philosophy of law. Topic. See also Topic. St. Thomas Aquinas Summa Theologica Philosophy of Law Determinatio Canon Law Catholic Church Christian views on the Old Covenant Topic References Topic Topic Bibliography Topic Aquinas St Thomas Treatise on Law Summa Theologica Questions 90 to 97 with a new introduction by Ralph McInerney University of Notre Dame Washington DC Gateway Editions Regnery Publishing Inc copyright 1956 2001 printing Brubaker William S 3 Thomas Aquinas and the Metaphysics of Law Alabama Law Review volume 58 2007 PG 575, U of Alabama Public Law Research Paper No. 898941, Social Science Research Network, http colon slash slash ssrn.com slash abstract equals 898941. Accessed 28 March 2016. Herring, Bernard, CSS, R. The Law of Christ, Volume. 
I, translated by Edwin G. Kaiser, CPP, S, Westminster, Maryland, The Newman Press Copyright 1961, Second Printing November 1961. Hutchins, Robert M. Aquinas Lecture 1949, St. Thomas and the World State Milwaukee, Marquette University Press, 1949.